Hello, YouTubies. I'm Vanessa, and I'm going to be sharing a little bit today about the Bauhaus. Well, what's the Bauhaus? It's a art school established in 1919, 114 years ago from today, just after World War I. I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. Well, during this time is a time, of course, of uncertainty, a time of rebuilding, of healing, because the war just ended. And it was also time for an art revolution. Yes, out was the ways of old, the ways of apprentices and, and masters, and in was the new way of teaching art. Well, learning together, I guess. I mean, the main guy, which you'll learn about right now, he didn't believe that you can teach art, but you can teach craftsmanship. That's a famous quote, said in a weird way. Well, the founder of the first school was architect Walter Gropius. That's the guy. He was uh, one of three directors. He was one of the three directors. Um, the other two were Hannes Mayer, I believe, and Ludwig Mies van der Rohe. Pretty famous dude. And then there were some really established artists that were the... Uh, um, that were part of the staff. Um, some were Paul Klee, Wesley Kandinsky, and the very famous Laszlo Moholy Nagy. Great guys, right? Well, they did what no one else had done in Germany before. They took this movement, they took this school, and they made something new. They took the different art disciplines and they like simplified it. They made it new, they made it practical, yet technological and modern. They're all about modernity. So they're no longer concerned with the showy, the cluttered, the clustered. It was over, an art, design, and fashion, done. And what's, what's even better is they're interdisciplinary, woo woo. They believe that they can unify the arts in everyday life. They were all about art and technology merging together to form a new age, the age of the machine. Kind of like we are about the digital age, the age of AI and contemporary interdisciplinary arts. It was similar to that. They were a powerhouse and they didn't stay stagnant even when one place didn't work out. So if they need to, they moved locations. Their locations that they, they had uh, for the Bauhaus was in Weimar, De Sao and Berlin. They lasted through many difficulties, um, but finally they came to an end in 1933 when the Nazis pressured them to close down. <clears throat> Nazis always messing up good things. Well, they might have closed down, but their influence continues to last through time uh, and through a lot of different art movements or di different art fads that happen. No one, none come close to what the Bauhaus did. The Bauhaus lives on in our architecture, our fashion, our furniture, our designs, and more. All I have to say about the Bauhaus is it did what no one else has ever done before. I'm telling you, they took simple things like materials like glass, concrete, steel, and they made their buildings out of that. They liked, they liked geometric shapes. They liked primary colors, simplicity, clean lines uncluttered spaces like smooth surfaces this is what they're about we love minimalism but the Bauhaus did it first like Mies, uh, Mies van der Bo always said less is more that was a big thing about the Bauhaus they studied theater performance and performance textiles typography architecture um, design fine arts fashion costumes they made costumes pottery stained glass tap tapestries all brought together they made furniture, kitchenware, so much more. They mass produced these things and gave it to people so they can have like use it functionally, like the functionality of the products, the items. So some of the famous things that they made were the MT8 lamp. I'm going to try to put it up here. Uh, also known as the, the Bauhaus lamp uh, made by Willem Wagenfeld, I believe his name is. And a guy named Carl Jacob Joker, another artist. And then there was the Wassley chair by Marcel Brewer. Pretty cool looking thing. I know you've seen it around, because I've seen it around. The Bauhaus chess set by Joseph Hartwig, or Joseph Hartwig. Pretty cool looking thing. 
I would like to play that. The Bruno Chair by Mize van der Rohe, famous chair. The really cool Tea Infuser by Marianne Brandt. I'll try to put it up here. There's also The Doorknob by Walter Gropius. That looks like that. I'll be putting it here, hopefully. And if I don't, just ignore that. Well, that's some things that you needed to know, probably needed to know if you didn't already know about the Bauhaus. I hope you enjoyed and thank you for watching. Bye.